How's it going fellow exiles? This is Chaos Rain here and in this video I figured one I tried some kind of new intro. Two I'd show you what I am up to as far as my grind and so on and so forth. As you know we basically work for things one step at a time spending a lot of currency in the process and in turn making tons and tons of currency as well. I uh, in this video I'm just gonna basically be going over this specific method of um, farming necessarily not necessarily making currency but you can make insane amounts of currency doing this in league and possibly even in standard I've just been having so much fun doing it so I figured I'd show you a little bit about it so first thing you have to know is that this is a standard mapper setup you're not going to be doing any kind of juicing there so don't expect to be like insane profits per map However, you can target farm basically whatever the heck you want and make insane value off of that. Uh, what do I mean by this? Well, let's just say for example, right now we're running um, Kirak missions. This is this is uh, the farm of the day, Kirak missions. And while running Kirak missions, you basically can choose what you want and farm that specific map for that thing. However, if you do this, you will not have the juiced up nodes such as the duplicated essences on your tree, additional essences, anything like this. But let's just see what you can get otherwise. Well, let's say we go Kirak missions. Well, as you see, we can do pretty much anything we want. On this map, we can get a free Blight map. As you know, Blight maps are pretty insane. This is a T16 Unidentified Corrupted, so it's a little sketch, but Blight maps aren't amazingly hard. So, so you don't have to hear him talk for like the next five minutes. We're going to go ahead and turn um, dialogue volume a bit down. All right, let's do it again. So. One thing that um, you can do though, is you can use these explorers scouting and reports just to re-roll, or you can use the better ones to re-roll for specific things. We're just using this. We have all map completion, so we're just using it to see if we can get harvest. Oh, look, right here we got an expedition. Normally, expedition is something that's either scarab related or something like that. Now, if you've done juiced up expeditions, you know that, you know, sometimes you even juiced up ex expeditions don't give you anything. But from my experience, all of these little crappy ones seem to be giving me more um, more expeditions than others. Val Pyramid. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. We'll do this one. Now another thing to note is that you don't get progress on this bar, I believe, unless I, I might be mistaken here. I believe you do. I believe you don't. We'll see. We're currently at four. And we do have the node spec here, so we can fight him, all that other stuff. But um, let's go ahead and show you exactly what we have going. Bit tired, sorry if I sound a little uh, slow. I don't even remember what this one was. Oh yeah, it was a uh, expedition. And if you have a finite number of expedition scarabs, for example, you're in a league, you're in league kind of standpoint. You have some gear missions laying around. This is a really good way to take advantage of your gear missions, and you don't even have to complete the map if you don't want to. So after I show you, you know, a little bit about this, just kind of kill everything real quick, and we can start placing bombs. Boom, boom. Now, I don't know if this is true or if it's just, um, what do you call it, confirmation bias, but um, I had heard that Kirak missions are paying out a lot better than just a, a normal map with a scarab, but, or not with a scarab, a normal map, but without a scarab it is, oh my god, I can't even talk, let me kill these guys and then I'll talk. That's a lot of enemies, wow. Now, a lot of um, these expeditions and maps, as far as in Kirak missions, are paying out better than like a plain map without a scarab, and, and uh, sometimes even a plain map with all the juice that you you know get via the Atlas tree. Let's see, I got this from a shabby. I'll leave it in guild stash. Cool. 
guildmate just checking in. We're gonna do beast rotas this weekend. Now, another thing you'll see is that, you know, sometimes you'll have multiple league mechanics. For example, this map, we have a blight, we have, ooh, look, our favorite map, and a toll, nice. We have a blight, we have a ritual, and we had an expedition. So, you know, considering that it was a free map, we literally didn't have to pick it up off the floor. We didn't have to chisel Alcar Valet. All we had to do was enter the map, kill, do the thing he wanted, and then we have other things we can do as well. All right. Then you can go ahead and do these as well. This will be a, probably a longer demonstration, just so you guys can kind of see exactly how these work. And, you know, you can see for yourself how juicy some of these can be without even actually being juicy. Oof. Well, that sucks. The one element that I'm not immune to, they happen to spawn with. But, I digress. So, we're going to go ahead and just skip the rest of that. Um, I didn't see any of my deferred stuff in the ritual. You know, I, I'm playing standard, so unless it's something that's really specific that I deferred, I don't really care. Now, as you see, we didn't use any scarabs. And then if we look, we don't get any progress towards our um, blue guy or maven or this. So Kirek missions is another form. Basically, you get no progress on these, I believe. I don't think you can have, like, maven witness it or anything either, so. But yeah. Rituals, Delirium Mirror. This is another really good one. Um, Delirium Mirror. And it's on a toll, so you know you can kind of pick, oh, hey, look, I like a toll. I want to run a toll. Let's go run Delirium on it. And this is going to be a very good way to farm free Delirium Mirrors to get free Delirium Orbs. You don't have to worry about it randomly spawning or taking all the nodes on your tree. All you can, all you have to do really is take a few nodes for Kirak and then run normal maps. Now I don't know if the increased quantity and um, whatnot apply to the maps in here, but I don't think they do because I do have like a, a whole quantity wheel. However, I did, um, I did decide that I wanted to keep those spec'd in for when I did my atolls. Because when I do my atolls, I'm basically just going to be turbo farming for uh, probably maps if I'm being honest. I just want to get a whole bunch of maps and that's going to be another farming method altogether. We gotta be kind of careful that's a divine shrine as you see get it oh that wasn't even a divine shrine it was just a divine yeah it was one of the totems i think ah, i can't kill you i don't think i'm gonna make it any further that's fine so we end up getting a fusing, some splinters, brand damage. Now, if I wasn't stuck on that shrine for a bit, or I just, you know, ran to the end, killed the boss, I probably would have done better, but eh, that's whatever. I just wanted to uh, show you guys a little bit about my farming. And getting th getting free maps like this is pretty, pretty powerful. Now, one thing I haven't showed you yet, which I should have, is every time you do a Kirak mission, you can go and talk to Kirak himself, and he might sell you maps. So I did forget to do it last time, but I'm not going to forget to do it this time, just so you guys can kind of see exactly what I mean. So if you can go to Commander Kirak, boom, and there's his uh, list of stuff. So this is another thing you can do. Um, first and foremost, let's show you the other thing you can do. You can actually look at his maps. 
you don't see anything you like, you open the map. You go talk to Kirak, and Kirak's selection changes. This makes it so you can buy the specific maps you want. Or, now I can check his refresh list. Abyss, Harbingers, Smuggler's Cache, Beyond Boss, Rogue Exiles. Same thing, I don't want anything here. Is there any really quick ones? Strand is okay, Forbidden Woods is okay, but Smuggler's Cache. Beyond Boss. Well, you can do it that way. And then talk to Kirak again. Now he has like an Elder Map. But again, let's say we have multiple missions. We just want to burn them. Alright, well, we need to harvest. Right there, we have two maps with harvest in it. So, let's see, Dungeon and Arcade. Arcade is an easier map to run. And we check Kirak again, and his inventory is refreshed. So this is another way you can do it if you have a lot of missions. If you're in Standard and just have a lot of, you know, either scouting reports and missions, do it this way. If you're in League, basically you're going to want to run Kirak, and then slowly but surely, you know, pick up stuff from him. But let's go ahead and go straight into the arcade. Now, because it said we had a harvest, we know for sure we're going to get a harvest. And voila, we have our harvest. Well, that's about it for this uh, pretty pretty short crash course, I guess pretty long crash course, into how to use Kirag missions. As you saw, you can refresh a shop. That's one really big thing you can do with Kirag missions. You can use the scouting reports, which will re-roll. Now, each of these scouting reports has its own special benefit in using. And, you know, obviously this one says, you know, uncompleted maps. And when you have all the maps completed in standard, you don't really care. And then there's special ones that give you like implicits on your maps when you re-roll. There's ones that guarantee you unique maps and so on and so forth. All of these are really, really powerful and basically let you nitpick what you want to do. One of the big things is it lets you re-roll so you can always get a harvest without actually having to get, you know, a harvest map or um, harvest sextant or spec a whole bunch of points in. Then you can use your points for other stuff. Uh, we're just using it for map quantity. I don't, still don't think it works, but yeah, you know, I'm doing what I can. And right here, this is another. So what's interesting to me is that you can, in a Kirak mission, get something that you can't apply to your other Kirak missions. <laughs> and that's what this is, basically the infused crafts. But another good thing about farming harvest um, especially if you're not using any crafts to juice up your maps and anything like that. You get a lot. I mean, a lot. Like, that's insane. That's three crafts right there, and in no time we're going to be out of, like, this tier of map. <laughs> and just like that, we got Infused Nemesis, Infused Bloodline, and a f one random free craft to our map device. I believe it's just one... I think it's just a free craft. I don't know if it's one random. I don't know how that works anymore. Let's see if we can't find something else cool. Not really. My mana is gone. We could upgrade some currency. This is one of the what well, is one of the things I like to do. Now one good thing is considering the monsters aren't 100% life or don't have any bonus stats to them, it's pretty beneficial to do this as well because you can just delete them. 
right here we can trade vowel orbs for regrets for example we are pretty low so we're going to take that up and regrets and voila yep now let's go over the atlas tree in our atlas tree we are pretty much potatoing our stuff I'm going straight up we're taking the little wing over here this gives us the 20% um, chance that scouting reports drop as comprehensive scouting reports. Comprehensive scouting report says reroll all Kirak Atlas missions, adding additional mission uh, mission options that can include new outcomes. That's I believe. Let's see. Basically, I believe it just um, adds a whole bunch of missions or a whole bunch of different maps, adding additional missions. Oh, okay, let's see. And then we have this, which is 60% increased scouting reports on areas. I don't think scouting reports dropped in Kirik missions, by the way. Then we have all 20 quality here. We want 5, 10, 15, 20 to all the quality of the maps in uh, Kirik missions. We have. 5% chance that scattering reports are dropped as blighted, delirious, or otherworldly instead. This makes it so when we do drop them, we can drop like the ones, for example, otherworldly means always beyond, delirious means always blight, um, delirium mirror, and blighted means always blight maps. So, it's pretty solid, honestly. Like, anointed blight. Oh, it's even anointed. That's cool. And then we have this one, which is areas have 1% chance to grant an additional cure mission. So we can kind of, uh, you know, sustain a little better. Then if we spec down here, oh, we actually forgot to take that. I'm, I'm sorry. Hold on. Let's unspec this because I don't think it matters. There we go. If you look here, we have Kirik missions have five percent pack size, and then twenty percent that their let's see, Atlas scouting reports chance that scouting reports areas drop as operative operatives scouting report instead and then operative scattering report rerolls all Kirak Alice missions granting missions within with rewarding implicit modifiers so I believe this is like the stuff from harvest I'm not positive I haven't encountered them yet but the rewarding implicit modifiers could be anything like additional legion additional breaches and of course you know if you have legion with legion you have guaranteed to legion unfortunately again you don't have the atlas nodes they don't work I have tried, no, it doesn't work. So, it is what it is, right? But, uh, other than that, yeah, that's the farming method. That's what we're going to be doing for a little while. Uh, we recently just perfected our boots with the uh, 100% perfect uh, suffixes and prefixes. All we need to do is white socket it, and we have 50 to 59 from our orb. So, we're pretty stoked on it. This is up from error service pretty soon here, and we're probably going to post it on online. It's pretty crazy. But yeah, thanks for watching. As always, take it easy and have a good one, Exiles.